we're going to find the region uh, bounded by this equation, uh, but we're going to rotate that about the x-axis between 0 and 6, and we're going to find the volume of the solid generated by that rotation. Now first, we really want to think about what this region looks like, and we're going from 0 to 6. So we're starting at 0, going to 6. When you plug in 0 here, f of 0 will be 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, as x gets bigger, what happens to x squared? x squared gets bigger, which makes the whole fraction get very small. Now, if you plug in 6, you would get 1 over 1 plus 6 squared, or 1 over 36 plus 1, 1 over 37, which is very, very small. That's like an 11, 1 over 37, there we go. So we'll just say it's going to start there and there, and it's going to be a decreasing function. I don't exactly know how this curve is going to look. Well, actually, I think it will bend the other direction. Okay, but it's going to be a decreasing curve. You could use shells. You could use disks. It's up to you. I'm going to go ahead and use shells here, and let's draw our cross section. We're going to rotate about the y-axis somewhere. Nope. Rotate about the x-axis, all right. So I just said we're going to use shells. I'm going to change my mind. I am going to change my mind, all right. So let's think about using shells for a second here. Your cross section, if you use shells, needs to create a shell. So that would be our cross section, and that's what it would rotate into. However, you're going to get a different um, cross section down here because, let's see, you also have to, you have to change your y coordinate and cover this whole region with these cross sections. So when you get down here, it's going to be a different, uh, different top function. So let's instead, let's think about going with disks. Disk cross section is going to look uh, perpendicular to the rotation axis. And you're going to change your x coordinate to move this uh, left and right. So let's forget about shells. Sometimes shells is better, but I think in this situation we're going to be better off using the disk method. All right, so that is volume equals pi. There's always a pi when you're rotating, or any circular anything. Uh, pi, what are we going to call this? R, we'll call it R. Let's leave it as pi r squared. Now, we have a function of x squared dx. Fill in some more details. We're going uh, a to b. Now we've got to figure out what is r, what is our r. So that height will be r of x, and that's going to be top minus bottom. And the top function is 1 over 1 plus x squared minus the bottom is 0. OK, so we have pi integral. We're going 0 to 6. That was already given to us. Uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared raised to second power dx. OK. So if it wasn't for this stupid square, this would be an inverse tangent, and we'd basically be done. Unfortunately, that square is there. So how in the world do we do this? Well, this 3.3 .3 is all integrals mixed together. So uh, we've got to figure out what strategy, how to approach this. So I can't just say this is the inverse uh, tangent. But um, it's not going to be like a natural log. You can try u sub, but the only use that would make sense would be 1 plus x squared. And then du, unfortunately, would have that uh, 2x dx. And that problem would be where where does that x go? Now, before I said don't go with shells because you're going to have two separate regions. However, shells, that antiderivative, I think, would have an x in it. So this u substitution might work if you went with shells. But... I already decided not to go with that, so let's find this antiderivative. There's only a few things we have left. There's a trig substitution, which looks a lot like the 
inverse trig antiderivative formulas, except it's less restrictive. It allows weird powers like a two or maybe a square root or even like a cube root with another x to the fourth. So there's a lot more uh, variety you can solve with the trig substitutions. And tangent squared x plus one equals secant squared x. If we use this right here, Oh, and I better not use x because we already have that x variable here in use. So we'll go with uh, theta. Tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. All right, how did I know that this is gonna be a good substitution? Well, this is a nice uh, identity because it's gonna let us, when we substitute x in for uh, tangent theta, it's going to let us turn the whole denominator into a secant squared. But the reason I knew that is because I remember the antiderivative that looks similar uses tangent inverse. And the reason it works is because of this identity here. Okay, so this is the substitution. Uh, no, I didn't write down this. The substitution we're going to make, we're going to let x equal tan theta dx equals secant squared theta d theta. Okay, there is no secant squared over here. Uh, that's okay, we'll get an extra secant squared and that'll be all right, hopefully. Okay, so we're ready to go and make this substitution. I'm gonna not write the uh, x beginning end values. So we have one over one plus tangent squared theta this is going to be squared secant squared theta d theta. All right. And the reason, again, we got secant squared theta d theta, that's what went in for dx. So that was the cost of our substitution. 1 plus tangent squared, the reason we're doing this, because that can be rewritten as secant squared. Okay, we're getting there slowly. Don't cancel secant squares out because the secant squared is getting squared. So we really have secant to the fourth theta or secant squared squared. And the numerator one times secant, one squared is one. So numerator secant squared theta d theta. Reduce this algebraically, we have one over secant squared theta d theta. And remember, secant theta is one over cosine theta. So the reciprocal is just regular cosine theta. Uh, so this is squared, so it's cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, so what to do next? There's some more algebra before we do a little bit more calculus. And then we have to unsubstitute back into x's. So I'm going to only take you into the book where you need to go. So this is a trig, trig integral right here. And this is to integrate any cosine times sine to different powers. We have no odd powers, so we're down here in step three. So we rewrite sine squared and cosine squared. We only have a cosine squared so we're only gonna use this right here. So I'm only gonna write that substitution down here. One half plus one half cos two theta. Just double check that. Yep, the only difference is we have uh, thetas, not axes. All right, so that substitution you're gonna make right here. This is a algebraic substitution. You're not changing variables, so you don't, uh, you, you're still gonna be a theta antiderivative and you don't have to do any uh, substituting out your derivative part. It's just a straight up algebraic change. Then you're gonna find the antiderivative. I would just take a guess. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. Uh, and you should be able to finish that antiderivative. And then of course you have to come back right here. Now when you come back, 
it's going to be a little bit tricky because you have a tangent, uh, not just sine and cosine. So let's talk about that. This happens anytime you do a trig sub. Trig subs are very versatile, but the price you have to pay is going back at the end. So to untrig sub, we're going to have, uh, I think we'll have a sign here. And x over 1 is, I just put it over 1 because we're going to use Sokotoa. So we have theta, the opposite is x, adjacent is 1. Now we're going to get the hypotenuse is going to be square root x squared plus 1. And now you have a 2 theta, not just a theta, so it's a little bit more painful here. Uh, so there's theta. Let's see. So you can use your double uh, angle formulas to get back into. This is the triangle you're working on, but of course that uses theta. So you can use your double angle formulas. I will show you where those are in the book. They're probably up here somewhere, but what we're going to do is go way down to formulas for trigonometry. There we go. There's all the basics at the top. Blah, blah, blah. Getting warmer, but not quite. Double angle formulas. All right. So we have cos of 2 times an angle. So we have cos 2 times an angle right here. You have three options, that, that, or that, and it's up to you which one you want to use. Um, probably stick with one of them that only has just a single trig function.